but I'm going to share with you uh, what we ha have discovered uh, at the site of Kerbert L. McCotter. Now immediately on our map we can see that our site right here is east <coughs> of Albira. Uh, it's hard to know precisely where ancient Bethel was. Uh, there is a hill uh, right here called Ras Et Tahuna. That seems to be the Acropolis of ancient Bethel. And so that was probably more or less the center of the ancient uh, city right there. So uh, definitely uh, we're east of that. And so that's a good starting point, but we have uh, many other requirements that are listed in the Bible. The, uh, the site of Ai, uh, the city of Ai mentioned in the Old Testament, has more uh, details about it than any other site, more topographical information or geographical information and more archaeological information uh, about it than uh, any other place. So you think it would be easy to find but that's not been the case. It's been, uh, well, it, it's because of bad scholarship over through the years when you trace the history of uh, this whole issue. It's, uh, it's bad scholarship, many errors made, and the fact that uh, scholars seem to be uh, looking for an excuse to say the Bible's wrong here, you know, so that they don't have to deal with the message of the Bible, I think, is the bottom line. Well, here's an aerial view. Uh, where we're looking uh, sort of west. Here's the ruins of Et Tel right there, modern <coughs> town of Deer Dubois here. Here's our Beitin, which I believe to be Beth Avon. And then uh, over here is our site of Kerbet El Makader, and we see Elvira there on the horizon. And you can see it's uh, pretty well built up today, and in fact, uh, the Palestinians are, are building more and more in the area. Fortunately, our site is in what they call Area uh, B. I think I got that right. You have to know your ABCs. Area A is where the Palestinians have total control of their, uh, of their area, uh, such as Gaza, uh, Jericho, uh, and a few places like that. Uh, and then Area uh, B is where uh, no, I guess we're in Area C. Area B is where the Palestinians have administrative control uh, of their town, such as Deir Dubois or Beitin, these little towns. But the Israelis are still responsible for the security of the area. And then there's Area C, which is uh, an area where the Israelis have administrative and security control. And in those areas, the Palestinians are not allowed to do any building. And so our site happens to be in that area where the Israelis have control. And even though Palestinians own the ground, the land, they cannot build there. And that's been fortunate for us because uh, it has kept the, the site from being built over. And so uh, we've been trying to uh, do our work there as quickly as possible because if the Israelis turn this area over to the Palestinians. They will immediately come and put buildings up on the site. So here's just a couple of general uh, statements concerning uh, our site meets all the geographical and archaeological requirements to be identified as the Eye of Joshua. Uh, we have evidence for destruction by fire, uh, ash, burned pottery, burned stones, burned bedrock. So let's look at some of this uh, evidence. First of all, we see that uh, it's in a strategic location. As I mentioned, our site is 10 miles north of Jerusalem, and we have a line of sight communication from our site south to Jerusalem. That becomes very important. Here's the verse I mentioned, Joshua 7, 2, where Joshua tells the spies, go up and uh, go to this place called Ai, near beth Avon, east of Bethel, uh, spy out the region. Why did Joshua send the spies to Ai? Why did he choose that place as the second place that they would attack uh, in the Promised Land? Obviously, it had some strategic importance, and I believe uh, that that importance was that it was a border uh, fortress for the southern city-state coalition. Because after the Israelites captured Ai, 
Then we read about them going south and attacking the city-states of the south, Jerusalem and uh, other city-states in that area. And uh, this was a sort of a, uh, a northern uh, warning outpost so that if any army came from the north, uh, this fortress could relay a signal to Jerusalem to let them know that there was an attack coming from the north. So by knocking out this fortress, then that eliminated that uh, possibility and the Israelites could uh, then move on to the south without uh, the advance warning. And so I think uh, that's the, one of the requirements, that it be strategically located. And here in this picture, we're looking south, and we can see Jerusalem there in the distance, some of the hotels and churches. And